One of the best ways to learn motion design is to actually just take something that inspires you and then break it down and recreate it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at the Mayor of Kingstown title sequence and build out a short section of it. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find something that inspires me. For this example, I'm taking this short snippet, the Mayor of Kingstown, and I'm looking literally frame by frame at this thing. So this is the first frame. If I move it back, you can see there's a cut here. So I'm starting on this frame and I'm moving forward and I'm looking at it and I'm seeing a lot of parallax happening here. I'm seeing things like the type is sitting further forward in Z space. I'm seeing lots of textures. I'm seeing like some framing elements like we see here with this black texture, some little elements here, some big type up here, image on the left, image on the right. If I scroll through it, the camera's moving down and we've got textures moving up. You can see them here, like and it's very, very layered, right? Lots of textures. And then we have a second actress here on the left and an image on the right, and her name is sitting down here as well. And then does a jump cut. And then right here, there's a jump cut in it as well. So if I play it back, you know, this is in real time, right? And we don't notice a lot of things when we play things back in real time. So what I like to do is just look at things frame by frame and recreate them right to really understand it like this is a great title sequence so the first thing i'm going to do is again with this being a reference is building a composition that's very tall right so that our camera can move from the top down to the bottom so if i hit command k you're going to see this is a 1920 wide comp because the camera is not moving left to right it's just moving from top to bottom so we're making the height 2160 which is 1080 times two, right? So we've got two 1080 comps basically stacked on top of each other. We're working at 24 frames per second, click OK. And what we did here is we just layered in a lot of elements. So this isn't a linear process that we just laid in elements and boom, it was done. There's a lot of like back and forth. Does this texture work or does this texture work? And how should it be? Should this texture be over here? So this isn't a linear process, and I just want you to understand that. And as I turn each of these layers on, you're gonna see here's a, a gentleman, and then here's the right side image. And we kind of went back and forth with these images. Here is the type up here in the top right. It's like the larger type. There's a pre-comp here, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Uh, here's some elements down here in the bottom left. Next, if I turn the next layer on, we've got some texture over the top. Again, we've got a framing element over the top here. It just kind of popped there at the top of the frame. More texture happening here. Framing element on the bottom here. Framing element over the top, very subtle, but there it is. A vertical framing element to divide the gentleman from the, the left picture from the right picture. A, another layer to separate the bottom of the frame. That piece that's kind of hanging down over him another framing element here on the left. And the last layer we have here is another very soft framing element over the left. So you can see we've got 16 layers here just for that top part of the composition. You don't have to have a ton of layers, but a piece like this, it's very textured, right? So if I select all and I hit P for position, these are all 3D layers. You can see that they sit in different points of Z space. Here's one that's negative 750, one that's negative 150. A lot sitting at zero. There's another one at negative 500. That's the type sitting at the top. So we're just kind of separating some of the layers in Z space, right? So now let's move into the next composition here. And we've got our base at the top. And I've got it labeled in pink here. So what I found was just moving some of the layers around, we had to adjust. So the frame on the left is going to stay at the bottom. And the frame in the middle is going to stay at the bottom because some of these textures are going to kind of Go over the top there. So first thing we're gonna lay in here is a texture. And let's go ahead and zoom in here and kind of move up so we can see this. So this is the bottom of the composition. Next we have an element being added up in here for some texture. Next we have kind of like a white, off greenish white background for our actor. Then we've got some silhouetting happening here. We've got the woman blurred out and then the woman on top of it. So we're creating kind of like a soft light, almost like a light wrap around her. And then we've got a texture over the top. We've got our image on the right with a phone booth. We went through several variations here of what that could be. Uh, we've got the large type in a pre-comp at the bottom here. We've got some left side texture. 
We have some middle texture separating the left and the right image. Some bottom texture across a lot of specs and kind of like a texture grunge overlay. We're using a lot of elements here from Texture Labs. Some splotchy white texture. And then this little element here as well. And if I hit, actually if I go up here, we've got one more that's kind of sitting over the top that's masked out here. And that's creating this white brown texture across the top and this brown texture over here. And that's basically it. Now we've got a full composition. So if I hit fit here, we've got a full composition, a top and a bottom, right? And it's getting closer. We still have some levels to go through, but this is part of the process, right? You wanna create that base. And then from that base, you start adding on effects and layering, coloring to really kind of bring it to the next level. So that's where we're at here. Now, next, what we're gonna do here is we're going to scroll to the top here and we're going to add a brush that kind of sits over both images, mostly over the lower half, but also a little bit over the top here. And we've got a texture that's sitting over the top of everything. So you can see it's creating this scratchy kind of bluish tint over everything. And then next we've got a line down the right side, creating a really nice texture framing element, texture down the left side, creating a framing element, and then one down the middle, right? So it's really starting to come together now. If we think of this as just one giant Photoshop document, that's basically what it is, right? I just like to design in After Effects. Next composition, now we're gonna start adding some effects over the top to really bring it in to kind of the world we see here, right? So let's go back in here. So the first thing we have is we've got two layers of an adjustment layer that create a lens blur effect. So if I go to effects here, it's just a camera lens blur and they're referencing layer four, the camera lens map, which we're gonna leave off. But if I turn that on, you're gonna see it's just two areas of white. It's black and white, which I'm not gonna go into how the camera lens blur effect references that, but it references black to white values. And we have some high pixel feathering happening on these masks as well. So we don't have to have that layer turned on. We're gonna turn it off. Just know that the lens blur layers are referencing that. So if, again, if I turn it off, you can see Especially like if we look here, look at her. So that's with it off. And then this is with it on. You can see it just creates some visual interest, right? Like why is she blurred at the top part of her head and not the bottom, right? Then we've got a layer of color that we've put over the top of everything. And you can see now it's really starting to pop. With this layer, we've got lumetry color happening here. We've got some basic creative and basic color correction happening. Nothing too crazy happening here. A little bit with the curves to create some contrast. On top of that, we're adding a quick chromatic aberration three, a very subtle effect. And you probably can't even really notice it, but it's there. I always like to add that over the top. And then on this top layer, we've got film grain, which we're using a noise effect set to 12% noise. And then I love to use this film emulation plugin called Dehancer. And it just kind of brings everything up a knot. I use it on a lot of my work. And you can see it's giving it, again, another color wash, bringing all of these elements into the same world. That's so important, right? So you can see the composition at this point without the coloring is looking nice, but turning these all on, spending some time with color, noise, things like that, these are the things that really bring all these elements together and kind of meld them into the same world and make them work, right? So that's super, super important. Um, this is a lot of what I teach in the Motion Science membership is like, how do we get the base level, right? How do we get the base composition set up? And then once we do, that's when we add these things over the top to really bring it up an another level. So many motion designers, not to go on a tangent, think that effects, third-party plugins are gonna make their work look better. And yes, they can, but if you don't have that base design, no third party effect or animation is gonna make your work that much better. All right, so moving on, what I did next was I referenced the movement here of the camera, right? So what I like to do looking at this, cause I really liked the movement here. If I turn this down to about 50%, we can see through it and I can really pay attention to how the camera's moving, right? So I added a 3D camera I brought my main comp into this comp and the main comp is what we see here, right? The four levels of the main comp. Brought that into my render output and I 
click this little button here called Collapse Transformations. This is super important. When I collapse transformations, when I have a 3D camera outside of this pre-comp, it can still see these layers sitting in Z space inside the pre-comp and it will recognize those and still create that motion, that parallax between those layers. So super important. A lot of motion designers forget this stuff. So I brought in a camera and I added two keyframes, one here at the beginning and one here at the end. Now, I didn't just leave these keyframes as just the standard ease in and ease out. I went in and I adjusted the curves so that I could get very close to what the camera was doing in the reference footage because I really thought that camera move was super cool. So what I was able to do was get the camera to match very closely how it comes out of the move, but when it comes into the move, I liked mine a little bit better, it's more abrupt, and so I disregarded what the original was. So let's take a look at that. So here's what we have, right? We've got the camera coming out very slowly, and then it speeds up and it comes to a pretty abrupt stop here at the end. And if you look closely, you're gonna see things like textures, right? Textures are moving in parallax, right? We've got textures moving like this framing element here is on its own Z plane. Some of the textures over here, the, the specs are kind of moving in their own Z plane. The big type up here has its own Z plane. And so it creates this really interesting movement, right? That we saw in the original. So it's getting close, right? But how can we take this a one step further? Well, what we can do is we can go into our next comp here and we can add our type. I'm gonna turn these on and you're gonna see here they are. And if you look, P for position, P for position, Gary Williams, title here, is sitting at negative a thousand pixels and Rachel, title that we're gonna see down here towards the end, she's sitting at negative 750. So yes, the titles could be on the same plane, but it just creates a little bit more visual interest just having them, you know, 250 pixels difference in them in the way that they move. Now you're gonna see some cool stuff here too with like the type is kind of distorted and this doesn't match exactly what we saw in the reference, but we thought this was a cool way to approach it. So let me double click this pre-comp and just show you here. What's going on is we've got our type set up and then we've got the type Luma Alpha matting, a texture lab texture. And then we also have fractal noise here that's turned off. So the fractal noise, if I turn that layer on, you can see it's just bars, right? Black and white values of bars. We'll fit this here. And what's happening here is the type has a displacement map effect. It's referencing the fractal noise layer and it's creating what we see here, like this type that's kind of like disjointed, right? So that's for Gary Williams. And we're doing the same thing here for Rachel Freeman. You can see the type is just, it's almost like a glitch effect. And if this fractal noise was animated, it would create this pretty interesting glitch effect with things moving. So that's what's going on. It's also happening in the big type that we see here. Same type of effect here where a fractal noise layer is distorting the type. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so now you can see as the camera's moving that type in the foreground, Gary Williams and Rachel Freeman, you can see it's moving on its own separate Z depth. So it's moving quicker, right? It kind of moves up faster, moves in slower here at the bottom. Just as a side note, I'm also paying attention here to the proportional grid. So you can see when Rachel's name comes to a stop, I'm paying attention to where are the rule of thirds. There they are. Now, Gary, you know, there's a case here to be said that uh, Gary should be moved up. So because this is a pre-comp, go ahead and move Gary's name up here. And let's just have Gary get close to the bottom of the line. Rachel was sitting on the top of the line. There we go. And we can preview this and it's still gonna look just as cool, right? But just worth paying attention here to the rule of thirds, which if you're not familiar with those, do get familiar with those rules. Last thing we're gonna do here, let's make sure this is fit to screen. We're going to add our jump cut that we had in the original reference. And all this is is a pre-comp and the pre-comp is set to start at zero, just like everything else. And then it cuts in right here. Now let's jump into this jump cut. What I did here, is I took all of the layers from the bottom of the composition. So if I jump back into main comp B, this is where we added all the pink layers, all the layers from the bottom of the composition. I just took all of these and I copied and I pasted into this composition here. This is just a 1920 by 1080 composition. 
I also copy and pasted all of the overlay textures that are applied across the composition as well as the coloring. And I applied the camera so that the camera matches. Now, the only thing I did was I added these film textures from the texture pack from Motion Science. It's a film texture pack. And it creates these like highlights we see here, like almost like film. And I added one extra layer of scratches that we can really see like right here and here. This wasn't in the original composition, but I thought if we jump in really tight, maybe we see some imperfections here that we can pull from. So I didn't want it to be exact. There's a case to be said that I could come into this composition and just duplicate the pre-comp from the main comp, splice it in here and scale it up. But I thought this was a much more interesting approach. So let's take a look at how it looks now. You can see there's that jump cut. It's really quick right? But it adds some visual interest to this and it makes it much more interesting like the original version. So again, this is super important. If you want to get really good at motion design at a professional level, I highly encourage you to find pieces that inspire you. I still do this all the time. I, I search on Pinterest, I search on Behance, find pieces that inspire me, and then I either recreate them or I get inspired from them by studying them and I make my own pieces and put them out to the world. I hope you enjoyed the video today. My name is Cameron with Motion Science and I'll see you in the next one.